Hello everybody, my name is Khaled Siddiqui and in this video I'm going to teach you how to completely take apart a Techniques KN6000 uh, music keyboard. Usually you have to take these keyboards apart in order to change the keys that break. Usually the keys break, that's the most common thing that goes wrong with these. But you could be replacing a board, uh, power switch, volume control, push buttons, you name it, anything you can, uh, you need to replace, this is the correct video for you. Now, this video, uh, I'm going to be selling this for parts on eBay. The keyboard works flawlessly, nothing wrong with it, but uh, it's hard to ship a whole keyboard. It's easier to piece it out and ship it in smaller boxes. So uh, I'm going to only take it apart. I'm not gonna reassemble it, because I will be selling it for parts. However, what I am going to do is I'm going to reverse play the video and post it on eBay as a uh, procedure how to put it back together so that you know uh, basically you're reversing the procedure that I took it apart and then that's what you do to put it back together. Okay, before I start taking this keyboard apart, I'm going to demonstrate to you to make sure that everything works perfectly fine and nothing is wrong with this keyboard. Okay, so here is the keyboard and let's play a song. Okay, so now I'm going to show you all the buttons. As you can see, these are the beats, different beats here and there. This is the contrast switch. The contrast works perfectly. And, uh, you know, guitar sounds, all different sounds. Different types. Okay, anyways. So the only problem with this keyboard is, as you can see, these buttons have been discolored due to pressure. It has been discolored. Other than that, the keyboard works flawlessly and I'm going to be taking it apart. Okay, so let's get started. First thing, you power it off. When you power it off, you close this. You know how to close this. There's a little notch on the back. Let me show you this is the notch, this one. So you close that and you unplug the power cable. That's very, very important to unplug the power cable. You cannot be working on a keyboard when it's live. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put something soft underneath this way. Uh, the keyboard is not gonna get scratched or anything, okay? So what would be a good thing? A quilt would be a great thing. I'm gonna go grab a quilt. Okay, so I brought a quilt, so I'm going to remove the keyboard momentarily. I'm going to spread the quilt here, nice and easily, nice and neatly. Two layers to be on the safe side. So there is my quilt, two layers. Now I'm going to put the keyboard upside down. I'll put the keyboard upside down and when you're taking it apart, you wanna put it in a way that this side is away from you and this side is closer, like this. So this is how you wanna do it. So the way you work, you're gonna do it like that. Okay, okay, let's see, perfect. 
Now, remember, <coughs> you have to open all the exterior parameter screws first. The wooden plate, or I should say the wooden pieces, you don't have to open. This is wood, this is wood, you don't have to open. And you open the screws that are deep and deep, not the ones that you see on the surface. These, the ones that you see on the surface are for the wooden plates. It has nothing to do with taking the keyboard apart. Okay, let's grab a screwdriver. Now, the screwdriver that you need is going to be a Phillips screwdriver. Uh, now, this is an automatic screwdriver, or I should say, um, you know, power screwdriver, but you don't necessarily have to have a power screwdriver as long as it is a Phillips tip or manual or power, both should work fine. Okay, all right, let's get started. So I'm opening this screw right here, all the edges. This is the floppy drive, by the way. So if I were, just, just, a, just a point. If I were to replace the floppy drive, I, I, I didn't have to take everything apart. I do this, and then these four, four screws. Let me show you. So this is it for the floppy. You take the face blade out and the floppy drive out like that. Now the only thing is that even though I have disengaged this, the cable doesn't unplug un unless I open all of it. So I still have to open all of it. Okay, so all the exterior parameters first. All the exterior parameters. So basically, I'm taking apart all the exterior parameters. I haven't worked in the center yet. Now this um, screwdriver has lights, which is good. Because it's gonna come in handy once I get to the deeper screws in the center area. Okay, like I said, you do not open these screws that are visible and popping on the surface. Only the ones that are deep. Those are the ones that we need to open. So it's here, 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 here. Okay? So watch. One. And we have this one. And we have this one. All of these screws. Now you could magnetize your screwdriver tip to to be able to lift the screws. I thought mine was magnetized, but I guess not. Okay, so there are no screws here. So basically we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the center. Eight in the center, the rest all exterior parameters. Do not open these screws, okay? And now this should be ready to open. That's all it takes, it should be ready to open. Let's put this upright again. And watch, voila. Everything is coming apart nice and easily okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to if I were to change these keys it's so simple you press down and slide out watch as if let's say I'm replacing this key it's broken let's say press down slide out that's all you do like that simple as that press press down watch press down slide out to the front okay same thing with the black ones. Press down, 
and slide out. Of course, this has been sitting for years and years, so it is a little difficult to do the black ones without actually taking the whole unit apart. But there is the black one. So basically, for replacing these, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything. Simply just you're ready to replace the new ones and then put it back together. Now, how you put the new ones? Same thing, the opposite. You make sure that this spring t goes to this little hole. See that hole there? The spring goes there. Okay. And then press down and slide in. There. Press down and slide in. Okay. The reason this didn't go there very well because it belongs to here. So press down, slide in. There. Okay. Press down and slide out. Okay. Anyways, so that's that. Now, how do we take apart these? You have to unplug. Most of these are just unplug, unplug. That's all it is. Let me bring the camera a little closer so you can see better. One second. Okay. So we will be bringing the camera here so you can see better. Okay. There you go. Now, what are we doing here now? We are removing the subwoofer and the speakers and everything else, okay? So now first I'm gonna unplug. Unplug, you have to do a lot of unplugging. There are a lot of cables that you need to unplug. The uh, whole bunch of cable harnesses are attached with a screw. So you have to unplug the whole screw to disengage the cable harness. Okay, so now with these screws removed, the only thing that is keeping the top panel attached to the bottom panel is uh, the speaker wires. So they, these are the only things that are keeping it attached. And of course, the, the power on off switch is also keeping it attached. So what do we do here? We have to bring a wire cutter to cut these tie wraps. Now, in your case, you might no, not need to do that because you are not taking it completely apart. You're only opening it to replace a part. So uh, in my case, since I'm parting, parting this out and selling it for parts, I don't have to do that. So. All right, so let me go grab a wire cutter. Okay, so I have my wire cutter and what I do is I'm going to cut these tie wraps. Cut all of these tie wraps. There you go. So in order to disengage the power switch, we have to remove this plastic and unplug that. Unplug the power on off switch cable. So after I unplug the power on off switch cable, let me remove these two. Okay. I'm trying to use the magnetization of the screwdriver, but I wasn't successful uh, to let the screw go there. Okay, so let's unplug these speakers. This is the subwoofer, this is the left, and this is the right speaker. So we have to unplug the speakers. Speaker cable.
okay that's one speaker right there now we will be disengaged disassembling the second one okay that's the second speaker now we go after the subwoofer Okay, so that's the subwoofer. All the speakers are disassembled. Okay. Okay. So now what we do is we wanna, these are the ground wires. I'm removing the ground wires. Now what we want to do, oops, let me come a little this way to center this so you can see the whole thing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open there's another ground wire here. Let's see, this one needs a little hand. So another ground wire, these ground wires are holding the top and bottom together, okay. Now I'm opening these two screws to open the power switch. That's the power on off switch. Okay, so the power on off switch is open. You have to unwind these wire wrappers, wire anchors, I should say. So this is the power on off switch. This is just a little sponge, sticky sponge, which you, which you can remove, you know. They put that to, to, as, as a, you know, as a cable, sticking together type of thing like a cable cable organizer type of thing okay now let's see what else we have left what else we have left we have the ear headphone jack which i unplugged so the headphone jack was plugged in right here this guy was plugged in right here which i unplugged and that completely separates the top from the bottom okay so the top is completely separate from the bottom for now i'm going to leave the top aside so i can finish my business with the bottom part and then we will deal with the to top part as well okay so let's unplug the speaker wires in order to unplug the speaker wires you need to unplug the anchor hold uh, wire holder or wire anchor and unplug all of these there you go and all our speakers are now disengaged but the speaker wires are tied together with the transformer wires so you have to cut the tie wraps we have to cut a lot of tie wraps to disengage the transformer wires from the speaker wires okay okay so now I'm going to open the transformer wires this plug comes out first and then this whole thing comes out from here and this is my power intake board. Power intake, that's where you plug in. Okay, so this is going aside. Now the actual transformer, which is the most heavy part.
Okay, so there is my transformer taken apart. Okay, now the whole keyboard assembly comes off with one screw on each side. Like that. And one, okay, so maybe a couple of screws on this side, three screws. This is my whole keyboard assembly. Now, there are some cables that I need to unplug right here. I had to unplug that and that and this is your pressure sensor pressure sensor on the keys remember the more you press the louder the music is this is the responsible guy for that okay so that looks good again to replace the keys you press down slide out Repla press down slide forward that's how you you know remove them all of them so I'm going to leave this aside and deal with this part. So here's my floppy. Floppy, you unplug it. I, I already unplugged the 34 pin uh, data cable. Now I'm unplugging the uh, power cable. So there it is. So I unplugged the power cable and the data cable. Okay, two things. Now, there's another cable anchor. We have to open all these cable anchors. And there we go. We have an, a couple more cable anchors. Okay. And then we unplug these. These three cables I unplug from there this is very important to be very careful because this is so critical this is the power audio power board or power amplifier including the bridge rectifier or the power supply circuit audio amplifier power supply circuit all together in one board what this is this is the connection between the power amplifier to the synthesizer board synthesizer board is where the sounds are generated so this is so critical to do it very nicely so you don't damage the cable or the board okay so we are opening this You have to open this is the fan power switch I mean power cable you know this has a cooling fan as you know and there's oh man Okay, as you know, there are rubber uh, shock absorbers so that the fan vibration doesn't transfer to the keyboard. That's why they have those rubber shock absorbers. The fan is out. Now this board is our next piece that come, will be coming out. This is the power board. Make sure you statically discharge yourself or statically shield yourself so you don't damage the, the board because all of the, the all these items are static sensitive items okay all right so now right underneath of this is our synthesizer board the synthesizer board is separated with a shield shield uh, uh, i should say shielded plate or shielded uh, insulation uh, between uh, the uh, synthesizer board and the amplifier board so that it doesn't get any noise any electrical noise or any 
you know, radio noise, okay? Now we are going to turn this around and get to the synthesizer board. This is our synthesizer board access, which we didn't need to open just to take the keyboard apart. One screw was already missing. Okay. See how much insulation all around it? That's the most important. Basically, that's the brains of it. And uh, this right here is the storage. So basically this is a hard drive. Let's see how many gigabyte hard drive this is. Mm. It doesn't say anything about its uh, capacity. N knowing the fact that these units were made nearly 15 years ago, the hard drive capacity is not very large. okay all right so again these are the cables that we need to gently remove let me unplug these i mean unscrew these Now, if you're just replacing a, a play key, you don't need to watch the rest of the disassembly project. Okay, so same way, you have to unplug these cables nice and easily. And this is our synthesizer board, okay? Basically, this is the synthesizer board, and this is attached with this with this plug, which can be unplugged. This is uh, an interface that allows it to store songs, or also to connect this to your uh, computer. Basically, a computer USB interface module. That's what this is: computer USB interface module and a hard drive to store songs. These are uh, the upgrade kit, the KN6000 uh, uh, upgrade uh, kit, uh, such as songs or you, you could, memory chips that you can store songs or tunes, uh, different uh, you know drum beats and what have you. And these are actually uh, plugged in to the bottom board. Let me show you how they come off. They're plugged in like this with two plugs, and then you can put it back in place. These are memory chips for, for storage, basically. Okay, so I'm gonna put it back together. These are your uh, BIOS uh, batteries, or I should say the clock battery. Uh, these are usually mm, soldered to the board. They're either lithium battery or nickel cadmium batteries, rechargeables. Uh, they have to be always uh, alive and powered in order for the chips to keep uh, the memory alive otherwise the songs that you have stored uh, may be deleted uh, unless it's on uh, you know uh, the type of chips you know there's a random access memory and then read only memory different types of uh, chips hold the information some only hold the information as long as there is electricity available the, this is like I said it's 15 year old technology so it's not like today's flash drives that a flash drive a USB flash drive does not have a battery because the type of chip that, that's in there doesn't need power to hold the memory hold the information but older chips they needed electrical power or you know DC battery power in order to hold the information okay and and if you remove this it goes to factory default then you have to memorize all the songs again 
these are the connecting cables between the uh, synthesizer board and the power board uh, or power amplifier board okay so that's that's about it on this part and this you don't have to open this is basically nothing is on the other side it's simply a housing for the speaker to generate bass to have like you know better echo see that that's all it is to generate bass okay so i'm going to put this aside and i'm going to work on the top section uh, i'm going to remove all these screws from here and let's take this one apart so we have a lot of stuff here too to take apart we have uh, two tweeters to take apart the tweeters are for high frequency a bad tweeter will give you only medium frequency and low frequency uh, so in order to get high frequency you have to have these tweeters okay let's get the other tweeter out okay okay so the f wire harnesses are not important they usually don't go bad so i can throw those away don't have to save those okay these are very important because a lot of these boards go bad so we have to be very careful to salvage them in one piece you have to unplug these you push them up by the way push them up to unplug them and there we go now it's all matter of this one too it's all a matter of opening a few screws a few more screws that is okay so we have a few more screws to open my battery is dying I'm gonna go get a replacement battery Okay, I have a fresh battery. Okay, now this cable also pulls up. Like that. Oh, this one. more ground wires a lot of ground wires okay so when you put these back together you have to be very careful let me show you how these work so when i want to put this back together i want to make sure the cables are nice and neatly aligned and you simply push it with this like that like that that's how you put it back together okay so I'm gonna put it here anyways okay so that's the LED and uh, buttons you know different types of functionality buttons and I believe this is the mic volume if I'm not mistaking there okay so I'll set this aside Now we have another board to open, a smaller board in the center. 
Okay, the smaller board in the center, I believe, was the tempo button. If I am not mistaking, this was the tempo. It has a little board in the back. More screws to open. This guy is also out. And again, LEDs and buttons, be careful the LEDs not to bend, because if you bend them, they're not gonna go back in place. All right. More screws to open. Oh, this is the uh, pitch bend switch bends the pitch let's open this puppy two screws in the center is what it has two black screws in the center the pitch bend button also has the ear earphone plug on it there so uh, you know the pitch bending and the earphone plug or headphone I should say this is the headphone plug and this is for the pitch bend. Uh, this plug comes in and out this way. The headphone comes in and out that way. Okay. Now, let's see what this is. Okay. Let's see what this is. Oh. Look at that. Okay. Tuning. Tuning knob. Let's see. There you go. This is out. We have more. There you go. This is another board with a bunch of LEDs and the volume. Uh, this is the sound volume. The other one is the uh, the uh, orchestra volume or accompaniment, uh, accom accompanying music volume. Okay, we need the little cutter, tire up cutter. Okay. This board has been salvaged. And this little board is just to keep the, the cable there, cable organizer. There are a couple of cable organizer boards in here. You unplug this. We are getting to the display, which is the most critical and the hardest to get to. We're gonna open all the ground screws, all the ground screws, and take out all the wire harnesses. So these ca uh, little boards are just cable organizers, and the way you do remove them is you pull the plastics out and slide them out. And this comes out this way, this comes out this way, this comes out that way. And this is an adapter board which adapts the display cables with the bottom assembly. Okay, this is our wire harness. There's still one more ground cable which is holding this together. Now we have to open these screws to disengage the display. OK, 
Okay. The, all this is, is the different levels of the display <coughs> where the display could go up, down, and you know, how in what angle you want it. So these are the notches that hold it to, to that level with a bar inside. There's a bar in there, okay? So this, we have one more cable to open. There you go. All these three cables go to the display assembly. Now we're going to open the display holding uh, screws, which is this guy and this guy. Those are holding the display. See this? That's what's holding the display together. Okay. Now the display is out. You have to fish the wires through the slots and watch. There's there's my display. My display is out, but I still have one wire to to disengage from the tie wraps. Okay, so this is like a little um, wire noise filter, like a little carbon noise filter, which you can open and close, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. Open these. The wire harness and my display. And voila, this is my display. This is the little uh, little thing that I was telling you about the level, which controls the level. This is basically uh, determining determining the level. This goes in, into these. Okay. All right. So this is my display, and this is the spring that holds the display at a acceptable level. You know. Now these, these guys are going to come, come off, you know, in sets like this. All of these, they come off in sets. Okay, I guess that's it. Then there's nothing else left here except for the empty shell. It's just an empty shell. Okay. So yeah, everything is taken apart. Nothing else is left. And uh, Okay, so I hope Okay, so this was how you take apart a Techniques KN6000 electronic music keyboard or synthesizer. I hope you enjoyed watching this and you learned a thing or two. Uh, make sure to check the next video which is putting it back together, basically the reversal of this video. Thank you for watching.